In women, you have higher levels of estrogens and estrogens signal a greater subcutaneous hyperplasia. So particularly on the butt and hips, or you know, with, with these higher levels of estradiol in particular, the sex hormones tell the body where to store fat and even how. It's still insulin that tells the body how much fat to store, but again, sufficient calories to fuel that storage. But the sex hormones tell the body where to store fat. And so as estradiol levels are higher, it signals more hyperplasia of that fat beneath the skin which is absolutely a healthy, protective place to store fat. And it is more hyperplastic. So much to the woman's chagrin, she has the ability to get fatter at her butt and hips, and yet it keeps her healthier. But that's what transitions with menopause. As her estradiol levels, the estrogens start to come down, I like to joke when I teach endocrinology to my students that at that point, the woman becomes a metabolic mortal. That prior to that, she is like it, it's she's bulletproof metabolically she is fatter than her male counterpart at every point in her life and yet she's healthier in every cardiometabolic marker than her male counterpart is after menopause now she's immortal now <laughs> if she has as much fat as her male counterpart does it's going to start to cause cardiometabolic problems because she doesn't store it as much in that subcutaneous space at the butt and hips it begins to be more stored centrally just like it is on her male counterpart. I would suspect it's in part due to a greater consumption of fructose. There are some nutrients that are metabolized, let's say poorly, if you will, that lead to altered fat storage. So there was a study done in humans, males and females, that gave them isocaloric drinks of high glucose or high fructose. Both gained some degree of fat during the course of the study, but where they gained the fat was totally different. The high glucose drinkers gained relatively more subcutaneous fat, so the pinchable, jiggable fat, which generally predominates on the female body, whereas the fructose drinking population had more visceral adipose. So at a minimum, I suspect part of it could be uh, the effect of how the liver in particular is metabolizing fructose and then dumping that fructose turned into fat into that kind of portal circulation, which is going to feed through visceral adipocytes first. So even still, that's speculative, but we know for a fact in humans, all calories equal, well, they're not, but uh, fructose consumption will, rel will selectively promote greater visceral adipose storage. And of course, fructose, that's um, not only, you know, like from fruit juice, but even sugar, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any, any, rich, any enriched source of fructose would have the potential to contribute to that. In, in this case, I would say that it's, it's interesting to me to note people who have become advocates of consuming high fructose sources, they're always lean and healthy. Uh, I would be interested to see someone who advocates a lot of fructose consumption who is overweight and diabetic. And so I don't know that there is an inherent genetic ability to tolerate fructose a little better, although there certainly could be. We know that there are certain groups of people who metabolize alcohol better. And why would I even invoke alcohol? The one similarity between, between fructose and alcohol is that they both primarily rely on the liver for their metabolism. So just as we know there are people who are able to more rapidly metabolize alcohol, it wouldn't surprise me yeah. if there are people who can more rapidly um, metabolize and tolerate fructose. Um, but even still, uh, I, I do think it's, it's important to control the, 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 the dose. That whole fruit, you know, for me, um, one of the first cardinal rules of eating a diet to improve insulin sensitivity is control carbs. And when I invoke that mantra, it, it really is to help people understand the value of whole fruits and vegetables, um, not juiced fruits and vegetables. And I think that's, to me, that's the divider. If, if this is a population or a person who's eating whole fruit, then I generally would give that a thumbs up, depending on where they're coming from. Um, if this is an overweight, severely type 2 diabetic, there may be some fruits that would be a little more problematic than others, but any would be better than drinking the fruit.